you know, Jeff, I was thinking, why don't we just come together on Friday oh. and do a review of the whiskey we had earlier in the week? Don't we already do that? Isn't it called like, um, oh, what is it? It's got a name. I know what we should call it. What do you want to call it? Second pour, right now. Join the army of the Whiskey Poppers. We are selling some t-shirts and a few lucky people will be actually gifted. That's right. So right now what we need you guys to do is like our videos, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and then share that video with hashtag Whiskey Pop. We will add you into a drawing to win one of the free shirts. In a few weeks, we will draw names for our winners. That's right. So we're gonna try to give away 10 shirts. So there's a lot of opportunity here for you to win a shirt. So remember, like, subscribe, subscribe and, share. and share with two people. Make sure you put the hashtag whiskey pop in there and we will add you into the drawing for a free shirt. Yep. Welcome to Second Point, my name is Jeff. And I'm Zane, your and resident e expert. Resident expert. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. He's definitely not an expert. But we might be experts in drinking. <laughs> <laughs> now see, now we're, now we're sending the wrong message. We're experts at in being responsible. In drinking. <laughs> and today we are drinking what? Rocknar. Rocknar, which is Scandinavian for God of Warrior, Warrior God, God of Warrior, Warrior. It's a Warrior God, some. <laughs> Let's smell it. All right, let's smell this thing, right? Okay. Now, we've been talking about it. Oh, before we smell it. All right, Rocknar is from Minnesota. Minnesota, yes. This is a, it says, Minnesota Rye Whiskey Cognac Cast Finish. This is mash bill of 80% rye, 10% corn, 10% malted barley. It is a 47 ABV. ABV. 90, 94 proof. It is produced and bottled by Far North Distillery. Price retails around 65 bucks. Now, the nice thing about these guys, these guys are trying to do a non-GMO thing. So they are doing these heirloom grain growth, mm -hmm. you know, whiskey rise that they're doing. They're a small, they're a small distillery, small farm. They're producing their own grain. They're distilling it, they're bottling it, they're doing the whole thing themselves. These are like the, you would consider very small batches. Yeah, this is craft whiskey at its at its core. At it, yeah. But they're not buying from MGP. They're producing this whiskey themselves. Yeah. So now you've seen this in a store recently locally. So yes. they, clearly they're growing. Yeah, and I when I say craft whiskey, you know, a, a lot of people only assume they mean you're taking somebody else's liquors and adding your blend. That is not always the case. I'm talking about these are guys that are crafting it. I mean, it's like a witch's brew. They're like, oh, add a little bit of this and a little that, but it's all like okay stuff. It's not this big, you know, mm -hmm. over the top, you know, you're walking into the Mystery Science Theater, you know, 3000 type of a... <laughs> you just geeked out on us. <laughs> I'm flatlining. It must be the sugar high so I'm drinking my cookie. So Far North Spirits, they are producing other whiskeys on sure top they, of this, yeah. but they are a small distillery. I know I get the feeling too, like them growing their own stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like this small family thing, you know? It, it kind of makes it cool, it could right? Be, it could be actually this huge industrial complex, but. I don't get that feeling. It doesn't matter. So some of the pictures I've seen of the distillery, yeah. that's not. This is craft at its finest though. Now it's interesting on the back, <laughs> they said this is 80% AC hazelnut rye, 10% heirloom corn, 10% malted barley. So they really go into explaining how they do it. And I'm gonna be straightforward. I didn't say it when we first tasted it. I could pick up the malted barley. Yeah, you can taste it a little bit for I sure. I mean, it's definitely there. Yeah, it's there. But All right, so let's nose this thing. This. Let's nose this thing. See, it's there. Okay, so we talked about this in Whiskey Pop. Yeah. And I said there was something distinctly. I'm gonna give you guys a little insight. So in the 80s, in the late 70s or in the 80s. Yeah. I was a kid who was with a benefit whose father worked on video games. And we're talking about the old arcade video games. Right. So I had video games around my whole life. He was the cool kid. I was, and nobody out. knew I was the cool kid. That's unfortunate for so many people. And I would walk into like my dad's shop and there'd be like 30 video games sitting there just playing. This smells like that shop. So when we opened this bottle, I literally 
went back to the future shit yeah. and, and went back to that moment in time where I walked in my dad's shop. I can smell like that clean rubber smell. And we talked about it, it's like pinballs, right? Yeah. It mm -hmm. smells like oak in the pinball machine. It, it kind of smells like a new pinball machine, actually. It's, it's crazy, it's right? The rubbers and the new oak smell. It's got a new whiskey smell. <laughs> so pinball machines smell like new whiskey. They say the nose on this is brown sugar, mm -hmm. cinnamon, vanilla bean, roasted almonds, and freshly sawn oak. Yeah, the oak for sure, and it's it's not that crazy heavy oak. It's this, it's a fresh oak. All right. It's super fresh oak. It's super fresh oak, and I get the brown sugar. It's really sweet smelling. So even like I'm yeah. smelling this kind of rubber, clean smell, of oak yeah. smell, I'm also getting some of that, that brown sugar in there. So you're yeah. getting a little bit of that. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's, let's try this, ready? Yeah. First word that comes to my mind. What's the first word that comes to your mind? Good. First word that comes to my mind is rich. <laughs> now yeah. this bottle, that's that's darker than just your standard amber. Well, now I take that from the cognac cask, right? I would assume the finishing of it is where that comes from. Definitely from that from that finish. Now I will say that I know that they're only aging this, I think 15 months. Yeah. And th that's a really good 15 months. I feel like the taste or the smell going together because of how oily it seems to come across to me. So you say that, but look at that. That's... Yeah, I think know? it's just coating the whole glass is actually what I think is happening. I don't know, but now... But when I'm saying oily, I'm not saying like a long finish. I'm just saying that it's got that mid-palate. Yeah. Uh, uh, like there's a lot of flavor in mid-palate. It's not a bite at all. I, I, feel like, I feel like there's not a lot of bite to it. No. The bite's really short up the front, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of dry. Yeah, I I, I would say dry for, uh, is definitely. Mm -hmm. I'd say this is a mid finish whiskey for sure. So the palate on this thing, it is butter smooth, flavors of smoked ham and balsa wood. That is such a key ingredient to the flavor and. You can get it right. This. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Butter smooth. I totally agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I, I get the butter smooth through the nose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's also probably that malted barley sort of that adds i know that. what you're getting out of that malted barley so let's talk about the finish for a second the finish is a hint of soft baked pretzels and anise there you go yeah you so you're getting that soft there. baked pretzel thing out of it. i think that's the malted but, part you're getting yeah and mixing it with a rye you're gonna get more of a licorice -y. It, not like you're eating licorice, not that. It's just that. Yeah, I don't, I'm not getting the, the, the licorice taste. It's the effects taste. of licorice yeah, without that strong taste. kind of that bitter sting of, yeah. of mm -hmm. licorice in a sense. I'll tell you this. Mm. I know this is the second pour. That's good. But I'm going to have to do a kind of a third pour on this. Yeah, see. go ahead and pour me up some. Just, oh. oh, look at that. How, that was magic. Nothing happened. If we could rewind that. I bet that's a maze balls. Now, as we were talking and yelling, uh, <laughs> as we ejaculated, whoa! That's actually accurate. <laughs> And language words don't mean the same language. they used to. <laughs> I, I actually get more of the anise flavor on that when I start on the end, right? I finished that it's last like on the bit tip, off. Start on the tip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys ever noticed that? I, I've noticed with whiskey, when you finish yeah. that last drink, there's a little bit of something different about that mm -hmm. last. I know it's that, oh man, I just drank the last drink. But it's also. Yeah, there's something there's else. There's something flavor that. happens, right? Yeah. You usually get that last bit of something. So, yeah, I think that anise is right there. I noticed looking at the bottle, when we were talking about small batch, you ever notice that Elijah Craig says small batch? Oh, of course it does. Okay, Elijah Craig, you can't be small batch anymore. This says batch 36. Yeah, that means- That's small batch. That's a small batch. <laughs> They've yeah. only done 35 36. other batches yeah, besides, before this bottle. Yeah. This is bottle 796. Yeah. That's a small batch. It's a small batch. I get pretzel. Yeah, you definitely get that. All right, I think yeah, we, gotta, I we gotta review this thing. So our one, two, three, four, five finger. Yeah, five being it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. One being this is okay. Yeah. Um, within the realm of rye I've had, and that's where I'm gonna judge it. Oh, you're basing it on a rye, because it is a rye whiskey. Yeah, it's a rye whiskey. 
It's a 3.5. 3.5. I rating it over a three right now because it is really good and this is our first time to go in on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I may have to come back and adjust that later, but I feel like uh, the overall uniqueness of the flavoring of this. It's unique. Is why it's kind of, uh, it's an exciting thing to have. I mean, it's. I agree. That's just kind of where I'm at. The one thing about this for me is it's doing what we expect whiskey to do today. It's not just enjoy the dram, but where it takes you. Yeah, sure. And yeah. I feel like this is taking me to a nostalgic place that I don't visit very often. That's kind of cool, man. And it's just kind of cool. So it's hard to not just give it a high rating because it's like, I want to give it a five because, you know, hey, yeah, I, sure. I'm eight years old again. I'm at my dad's art. It, it's not that. So I see where you're getting that, yeah. to that 3.5. If I compare this to other rise, I'm going to give it a three. Yeah, three. Now, I say that because there's some other rides I think are better than this. Yeah. But because of the nostalgic feel for this thing, if I rated it just on nostalgia, it's a five. Oh, well, what it does. Yeah. It, what it does. Off camera, it's a, what it off, did. It's yeah. five, right? Yeah, sure, right. But, okay, so it's a, it's a good solid three, which means it's a really good whiskey. These guys are, this is batch 36. Yeah, the, the, if they're still working to perfect their craft and, I mean, where can they go? And I would say, I would dare say too, is like they may not always have a cognac cast floating around. They can shove this stuff in. So you're not always going to have the same experience with these guys. Yeah, these small sure. batches are small experiments. Yeah. And so an experimental whiskey right now, that's what whiskey's all about. This is good. It's yeah. definitely something that you guys need to try. I, I would say this. Anytime I say something is a three, it's kind of like you... If you got the spare change, you need to go try to get this. When we're sure. telling people it's a three, it's a buy it. Yeah, it's a buy it because the price point is fair Yeah. for what you're getting. If say you spend a little bit more, even if you're spending 65, it's a fair price for the, yeah, for the bottle. Yeah, for sure. And again, I'm sharing it with friends. We get to talk about it. We get to have the, the, the interaction amongst ourselves. That's a cheap 60 bucks. I, I agree. So, I mean, it's that thing. It's like, we're going to sit around probably after we're done shooting tonight and we're yeah. going to talk about like this whiskey we've had and it, what it brings yeah. up. And it's those kind of things that make whiskey what whiskey is. It's not about just drinking and getting drunk. Yeah, it's and, the hobby of whiskey tasting and the camaraderie that it comes it's with. It's what whiskey brings up. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think this is one of those whiskeys that deserves what it is. Yeah, it's... I, I'm I'm so glad that we got this one. Now studio. I don't know how rare this one's going to be for your area. We yeah. we thought about it and thought well, this could be one of those rare whiskeys. You may not see it at all in your area because it's Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So if you have had it, let us know down below what you think. If you think you can find it, try it and let us know. We'd like to find out more about what you think about it. Yeah, because I mean everybody's palates are going to be different, but it makes me smile. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. So. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe. We're doing the contest. I'm trying to give away some t-shirts. I mean, you don't want free stuff. Who doesn't want free stuff? All you gotta do is share it with two friends and hashtag whiskey pop. And you get entered in a drawing to win a free shirt. Yeah, that simple. But until then, I want you to be safe. And please enjoy your whiskey with your friends. Don't be stingy. Yeah, and don't collect it and just let it get dust. Go drink it. It's okay if it gets dusty because you just have too much. That's not possible. <laughs> In the meantime, you guys keep being cool. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.